seaweeds and green algae I told you already that seaweed itself is a misnomer it's not uh, a good way to call the marine algae but uh, you know the seaweed is uh, classically been used to refer the marine macro algae right so uh, this lecture is all about the green macro algae so in summary that the seaweeds or the marine macro algae can be of three types red green or uh, you know uh, brown so rgb right so it's not blue but brown rgb is also a uh, printing color spectra like cmyk rgb is also used for printing right so in in that uh, color spectra rgb it's a b stands for blue but here it is brown right so red green and brown algae so in which red and green algae are quite similar because they they belong to the same kingdom viridae plantae or archiplastida that we have come across in this class right this course earlier in, in this course so red these are some of the examples of the red algae uh, capophycus or hypnia all these are examples of this red algae while uh, these are the examples of the uh, you know the the green algae the ulva uh, monostroma uh, right all these are codium all these examples of this uh, the green algae right and uh, these are some of the examples of the brown algae that we will come uh, in a short while so these are the, the the three major groups of the seaweeds or the macroalgae as we can see a red and green belongs to the archiplastida here viridae plantae the chlorophyte is belongs to the viridae plantae while rhodophyte belongs to the bilophyta both are part of the kingdom plantae so both of these are quite similar and uh, the brown algae belongs to the kingdom chrome alveolata or rather kingdom chromista uh, along with the dinoflagellates and diatoms you know so if you want to have a look at uh, the real simple introduction to the classification of the seaweeds i invite you to read this uh, general article published uh, way back in in uh, in, in a uh, science education journal called resonance linked up in the course website have a look so the seaweeds, uh, there are uh, several uh, differences between the three major seaweed groups, the green, red and brown. Uh, coming first is the chlorophyll. Green algae have got A and B chlorophylls, while red algae has got A and D. But sometimes it also got C, you know, occasionally C is also present. But D, red algae has a D ending, so it also has got D chlorophyll, <laughs> mnemonic. While the brown algae has got A and C. Uh, you know this is uh, how the difference in the chlorophyll constituents so chlorophyll a is present universally in all the plant lineages right now coming to the accessory pigments green algae has got no accessory pigment and that is why it looks green it's not masked you know the green color is not masked by any other accessory pigments like carotenoids in the case of red algae phycoerythrin is the accessory pigment and because phycoerythrin is red color this red algae looks red in color and uh, in the case of brown algae it's fucoxanthin is the accessory color uh, the pigment so fucoxanthin also looks brownish so that is why the, the brown algae looks brown in color so by the way brown algae is, belongs to the kingdom chromista uh, the chroma you know the color colorful uh, kingdom chromista isn't it so the, coming to the chloroplast green algae has got only two chloroplast membranes you know so membranes in the chloroplast uh, uh, the two because it's a product of the primary endosymbiosis at the same time red algae also has got only two because red or green both belongs to archiplastida right archiplastida members resultant uh, uh, out of the primary endosymbiosis right but in the case of brown it has got four membranes two from the red algal endosymbiont and another two membrane by the invagination of this uh, particular cell as well as the invaginating cells on plasma membrane you know? that is why it has got four membranes uh, in the case of brown algae coming to flagella green algae has got two equal flagella as usual the case with the bicons uh, red algae they lost it red algae has got no flagella at all so red algae has no motile phase in its life cycle that's a peculiarity of the red algae uh, for the brown algae there are two flagella but two are unequal in size so that is why it's called uh, heterocontophyta or heterocons so cont i told you it means flagella hetero means different so different size of the 
the flagellar lung of the brown algae so that is why it's called heterochondrophytes or straminopiles you know so if you look at the viridae plantae so viridae plantae by the way is a green plants right that uh, includes includes chlorophytes and streptophytes chlorophytes are the green algae you know utc clay that is so ca triboxyphyce and uh, chlorophyce a plus the streptophyte so streptophyte is also a natural group a chlorophyte is also a natural group because it, it's a clade streptophyte is also a clade but green algae is not monophyletic because uh, traditionally green algae includes chlorophytes and some of the basal streptophytes carails and carophytes you know so that is why it's not a monophyletic group but streptophytes yes it's a monophyletic group so if you look at here uh, this is basically of course is drawn proportional to the the time so it's a time calibrated tree uh, or you know 1000 million years back uh, before present there is uh, you know 1 billion years back is how this clade originated you know chlorophyll b start storage stellate flagellar structure and gene transfers all these are the tick mark you know the tick mark means uh, uh, evolutionary innovations you know so that is what the, the the defining characteristics of all these groups are usually written below the tick mark you know so that is a synapomorphic characteristics so these are all synapomorphic characteristics of this group Sec next is uh, glycolate oxidase system is a synapomorphic characteristic of uh, the streptophytes so the origin of streptophyte is correlated to the, the the terrestrial colonization from the marine and aquatic environment aquatic habitat when this algae gets introduced into terrestrial habitats there is a huge constraint because in in ocean or in marine system oxygen level is pretty low so but when it gets introduced to the terrestrial systems oxygen becomes very high you know so then uh, there is an associated problem with photorespiration you know so that is why glycolate oxidase system uh, the biochemical system originated and that is uh, you know that is uh, the innovation at the lineage leading to streptophytes you know so that is a very very important system the, the glycolate oxidase system you know so as you can see here this is a normal calvin cycle uh, in in raw, uh, the calvin cycle ribulose 5 phosphate convert to 3 phosphoglycerate the first step but in in the case of uh, pho phosphorespiration or photorespiration what will happen is that oxygen gets assimilated the, the respiration of the uh, ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate leads to the production of 2 phosphoglycolate which is not an energy efficient uh, you know uh, pathway and uh, finally it leads to something called glycolate so the energy is completely lost you see so how to get rid of this energy the lost energy the mechanism is through the peroxisome so this is basically inside the chloroplast so this glycolate gets introduced into the peroxisome so glycolate first converted into glyoxylate and this enzyme is uh, as you can see that glyo, uh, no, glycolate oxidase so this key enzyme originator in the ancestor of streptophytes that means carails plus embryophytes so that is how uh, you know the, 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 the enzyme plays a key role in a photorespiration and finally as you can see glycine gets exported into mitochondrion and finally uh, you know the carbon dioxide gets introduced into the cytosol so that is how uh, you know that the photorespiration happens so this particular enzyme the glycolate oxidase is a very important uh, enzyme involved with photorespiration and that is the reason uh, you know this is uh, uh, timed concurrently with the terrestrial colonization of the plants you know the streptophytes cara for example is a uh, it's very common in terrestrial habitats especially the freshwater habitats how about in algae uh, rather than the cara the streptophyte but if you look at uh, more basal green algae for example chlorophytes or other algal uh, you know uh, lineages how do the carbon is getting concentrated yes so that mechanism is known as carbon concentration mechanism ccm so in algae ccm is achieved through uh, the subcellular organelle called pyrenoids so pyrenoid is very dark if you look under the 
a bright field microscope you can see that here this is a senodesmus you can see that a very big vacuum like organelle which looks like a nucleus but it's not a nucleus but it, this is pyrenoid you know so pyrenoid has got several physiological uh, and biochemical characteristics that makes the co2 the, uh, the concentration of co2 much much higher so photorespiration doesn't happen so this is an adaptation to prevent the photorespiration in the algae you know the ccm so the green mm -hmm. algae so this this talk is about the green algae isn't it so green algae can be grouped into two main kinds one is chlorophytes and another is streptophytes and I, as I told you, streptophytes are our most recent common ancestor to the entire land plants, also called, you know, embryophytes, you know. So this is the sister clade of the embryophytes, so basal clade, right, streptophytes, uh, plus the land, uh, land plants. Now coming to the chlorophytes, there are four major lineages of the chlorophyte. Uh, the one is core chlorophytes with the uh, triboxyphyceae, chlorophyceae, and ulvophyceae. Uh, traditionally it's called UTC clade uh, you know ulvophyceae U T stands for triboxyphyceae and C stands for a uh, chlorophyceae like right? synodesmus as you can see here right so these are the major groups of the core chlorophyte algae plus prosinophytes so prosinophyte is very less studied group of algae uh, you know clepsormidales and nephrocelmidales all these are the examples of this uh, prosinophytes so uh, this on on the right side of this one so it's basically agf is ancestral uh, green flagellate you know uh, organism so that is how that resulted in chlorophyte lineage and streptophyte plus uh, you know uh, the embryophyte lineages right on the right side you can see that all the basal part is full of carophytes so cara is the most important member of this group uh, also signimatophyceae, signimatales, right, and clepsormidiales, all these are members of the carophyceae, right. So prasinophyceae is part of the uh, this lineage which is very uh, close to the, you know, core chlorophyte. So together it's called chlorophyta, right, prasinophytes plus core chlorophytes. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this is streptophyte. So streptophyte is basically carophyte plus the land plants together that forms a clade streptophytes or carophytes alone is not a clade you see so because all the carophytes did not share a common ancestor not shared with the land plants so that is the reason for it and this figure also shows you two important characteristics phycoplast and phragmoplast so phragmoplast is a synapomorphic characteristic for uh, you know carophyceae signimatophyceae as well as the land plants so this uh, you know this synapomorphic characteristic phagmoplast is basically uh, during the cytokinesis you know so this is uh, this kind of disc like structure forms in right so on, on the other hand for the the core chlorophytes it's basically phycoplast distinguishing uh, cell grooves that is the first stop in the cytokinesis the cell division you know so that is also uh, synapomorphic characters defining these two major groups this illustration also shows you so many arrows you see so these arrows are secondary endosymbiosis with unrelated lineages so in one sense this is a lateral gene transfer or horizontal gene transfer you know endosymbiosis right so the first one is nephrocelmidophyceae so ne nephrocelmis is an is an is a member of prosinophyceae so this prosinophyte algae gets into assimilated into i told you it's a protozoa right hathena it's a you know it's a uh, eukaryotic uh, unicellular organism so that actually gets into i mean that 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 is the reason that hathena is photosynthetic now uh, with its uh, kleptoplastid you know so uh, that is basically stolen plastid you see the plastids get stolen by this eukaryotic organism so it's a putative secondary sy symbiosis in progress putative means that purported you know it's not really clear but yeah it has been proven now uh, the studies uh, multiple studies have confirmed the existence of this uh, secondary sy symbiosis in Hathena I told you it's in, in, in Japan it's a Japanese beach second arrow is coming from pyramiminidols so this is a prosinophyce right pyramiminidols so this 
uh, you know this particular uh, prosnophytes got engulfed in ancestral euglena so that led to the development of euglenophytes that is what this arrow mark means you know euglenophyte formation by the secondary endosymbiosis and as you can see here one of the ancestral ulvophytes look ulvophytes are usually the the uh, seaweeds you know macroscopic marine algae yet ulvophytes or of course ulvophytes here also contains several unicellular membranes uh, members so most probably this is a unicellular member of the ulvophytes here got into the uh, chlorarachnophytes you know that is also a, an ancestral uh, eukaryotic you know protist right chlorarachnophyte so then the chloroplast got uh, embedded into the chlorarachnophyte and that is how the chlorarachnophytes got its uh, you know this uh, three membrane bound uh, chloroplast by the secondary endosymbiosis by an ulvophyte you know and as you can see the ancestor of the entire core chlorophyte clade before the phycoplast emerged got engulfed that is a serial secondary endosymbiosis with green dinoflagellate you know and that is the reason that the, 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 the dinoflagellates now have a chloroplast in it very interesting right so several of the secondary endosymbiosis uh, resulted by engulfing the members of the archaeplastida you know they these are the members of the primary endosymbiosis the resultant of the primary endosymbiosis and this member subsequently got engulfed to form the secondary endosymbiosis coming to the next secondary endosymbiosis are from the ancestral green flagellate algae which doesn't have any MRC that is most recent common ancestor with any of the extant species so AGF got engulfed to form the chrome alveolate chromistan alveolata you know like diatoms you see and brown algae and another of the AGF got engulfed by coanoflagellate you know so the collared flagellate that is basically a unicorn algae you see and yeah it's very exciting uh, that is why some of the coanoflagellates are photosynthetic even though it is uh, unicellular i mean unicorn you know uh, coanoflagellate by the way is mrc of the entire animals the metazoans you know so green algal phylogeny if you look at here as i already told you it's utc clade plus prosnophytes right so utc means ulvophyceae uh, chlorophyceae and triboxyophyceae so together is called core chlorophytes you know plus prosinophytes so these are prosinophytes right so that together forms the chlorophyta while the sister clade of the chlorophyta is streptophyta yes streptophyta is a, a monophyletic group uh, streptophyta also includes embryophytes so these embryophytes are the entire lineage of the land plants every single plant that you can see on planet earth's land masses are embryophytes you know so some examples of the ulvophyces include ulva, monostroma, aceta bilaria, you know, the uh, mermaid's umbrella, cladophora, bryopsis, codium, trentipolia, caulerpa, borgensiella, all these are examples. So borgensia, for example, is a very beautiful, uh, you know, the endemic uh, algae. In, uh, you can find them in uh, uh, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, you know, borgensia. So C stands for chlorophyceae, most are unicellular. So as we can see, Chlamydomonas, like Chlamydomonas nivalis is uh, very common uh, snow algae, snow pink algae in Antarctica, you know. Volvox, Cenodesmus, Dunaliella, already told Dunaliella is some of the members of Dunaliella, like Dunaliella saline are uh, hyperhalophilic organisms that produce the beta carotenoid you know all these have got significant biotechnological applications too t for uh triboxyphysia triboxia and chlorella are the members chlorella i told you it's a single cell protein as well as the production of the uh, you know a uh, large number of, of uh, nutraceuticals right protein production yeah chlorella and triboxia is very important in lichens you know it's a phycobion of the the lichens Prosinophytes include Nephrosalmis, Clepsormidium, Cara, and Spirochara. All these are examples of uh, green algae, right? But in strict sense, Cara is, 
you know it's not really a, a chlorophyte algae but it's a streptophyte algae which is very close in you know uh, uh, ancestor it's very close to the land plants you know so if you look at the cytokinesis you can see the two kinds of cytokinesis for the chlorophytes is phycoplast as you can see a groove in the case of chlamydomonas you can see a groove coming and then the cleavage furrow the groove is called uh, cleavage furrow through the, the phycoplast so the phycoplast uh, the microtubular structure that actually separates these two uh, cytosols you know during the early phase of the uh, cytokinesis right and then comes uh, the, of course the karyokinesis is uh, uh, over the first step and then comes the cytokinesis right so this is the second step here so clubs or medium also is same way cle cleavage furrow uh, and the furrow comes and then you can see the arrangement of the phycoplast is kind of different you know this is longitudinal but here uh, this is basically perpendicular to the direction of the you know the the cell division here so in this case it's a it's a fritchellia fritchellia is another member of the chlorophyte so you can see here the phycoplast is being formed uh, uh, you know uh, concurrent to the cell plate so cell plate is present in in the lower two cases uh, coleochaete as well as fritchellia you know so anyway this kind of phycoplast is uh, characteristic of the chlorophyte algae at the same time streptophytes are a bit more advanced in such sense that it has got phragmoplast so as you can see that it's a cell plate formation right if you look at the top uh, view so new cell plate forms so that the cell plate increases in in its diameter uh, to the maturing cell plate so that is how it forms now if you look at the side view you can see that nucleus is already separated you know karyokinesis already happened then during the cytokinesis you will see that the phragmoplast microtubules uh, forms and then it stretch the cell to form this kind of uh, cell plate you see cell plate is being formed gradually and consistently separating two cytosols together so this is how uh, the, the the cytokinesis happens in the case of streptophyte so phragmoplast as well as phycoplast are uh, synapomorphic characters of uh, uh, you know that is the evolutionary innovations of these two important lineages one example of the green mic uh, macroalgae is monostroma corrosiens bast so as you can see it has got the bast name because um uh, you know i'm the one who formally proposed this name and accepted scientifically now so this green seaweed is the most expensive green algae in the world you know uh, monostroma corrosions so corrosions because that is the the sea current corrosio current you now this algae grows only in those regions uh, which gets this you know warm water pacific ocean current corrosio current and that is the reason I named it as Corotians, right? So, uh, as you can see that this is a sub, you know, uh, this we can use it to, in place of this porphyra, that is nori, for uh, making the sushi. These are, as you can see, these are sushi wraps, right? So, the covering of the sushi is the nori, right? Or in place of nori, you can also use uh, green seaweed, that is uh, Monostroma Corotians. So the reason why you want to supplement, uh, substitute the porphyra with uh, this monostroma is that taste-wise quite identical and it has got a, a kind of a different set of taste. Many people prefer, uh, you know, this uh, uh, Aonori, right? That is basically monostroma corrosions uh, wrapped sushi rather than the red seaweed porphyra wrapped sushi. So this is how they cultivate this monostroma in Japan. Monostroma is cultivated all around the warm water coast of the Japan and uh, commercial cultivation because uh, it's very expensive, you see. So the, coming to the commercial cultivation, there are majorly the four kinds of cultivation types, you know, offshore as well as near shore cultivation for the algae, the seaweed farming techniques, right? And these techniques are all uh, you know, uh, 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 these these techniques are actually meant for mimicking the habitat, the natural habitat. For example, the first type you can see here, the first type is a floating raft. This raft is always floated. So each figure has got two watermark. The the top one is high tide, 
as you see the tides when it becomes high and the lower tide is a lot lower tide, right if you ever go to the beach you can see that sometimes the tides become high sometimes the tide becomes low so each of this figure you can see the two kinds of tides so high tide mark and low tide mark and at that time what will happen to this raft so the first a a kind of cultivation method this is always floating immaterial of the uh, you know the uh, the tides right both a high tide as well as low tide is always uh, floating so this kind of method is good for cultivating those algae which are uh, you know which are not really uh, intertidal but subtidal you see it's a little bit interior in the ocean uh, the algae grows uh, natural habitat is a little bit interior to the ocean for example kelps saccharina undaria eucuma capophycus and sargassum is being cultivated this way you know so these are floating raft in the deep sea with dead weight mooring so the mooring here the the tie uh, you know uh, the thread is the ropes are attached to a mooring so mooring is already sticked inside the ocean bed so how do you get this done here inside the ocean bed how do you actually stick these sticks so instead of sticks uh, the common practice of the seaweed farmer is using a very heavy uh, weight for example uh, old uh, you know uh, train wheels so train wheels as you know it's very heavy so you can pick up the train wheels which are very old you can buy it from the, the railway companies you know and then you can tie a rope and then throw it out on the ocean bed so it, it actually remains in that place you know the oceanic currents cannot actually uh, displace of course eventually it will displace but it's not that very fast right so that way you can use this kind of dead weight mooring if you really want to see this kind of cultivation yeah you can you can see it in here in india too if you ever go to kanyakumari you know you can see that there are so many kapaphycus alvarasi cultivation fields near kanyakumari by you know in uh, kapaphycus alvarasi in tamil nadu the local people call it as Pepsi Pasu, you know, Pepsi Pasi. So Pasi means seaweed, Pepsi, yeah, it is actually funded by, the project was earlier funded by PepsiCo, the same Pepsi, you know, company, being a soft drink company, the US corporation, and that is why it's called Pepsi Pasi, yeah. So the, the ne next is number B. The, in this type, it's basically semi-floating raft in the shallow water so the water has to be shallow not really deep sea but shallow water and it's a semi floating sometime it floats sometime it gets exposed so what are these times so in 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 times of high water mark that is and high tides uh, you know it is basically uh, you know it, it 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 gets floated in the ocean water you see so the algae are submerged in the water during the high tides but during the low tide you see the sticks touch the uh, the seabed exposing this net you know so uh, the algae growing on this net gets exposed to it so that is why this algae can periodically get exposed during low tide mark and submerged during high tide very clever method of doing this kind of thing of course and for this as well you need a dead uh, weight mooring you know otherwise all these sticks get displaced with the wave action you see so this method is preferable for cultivating porphyra monostroma and ulva uh, like in the earlier picture you can see that that is basically a semi floating raft method and this coming to sea sea is quite simple you know so sea is basically off bottom shallow water so in the shallow water you can make this kind of uh, uh, structure and you can simply cultivate it through these rocks so these are just rocks you know so nets gets immersed in high tide so during the high tide enter net is immersed inside the water and while the tides are low it gets exposed you know nothing is floating it's already fixed it so this sort of method is used for porphyra monostrum and ulva so basically both these methods can be used for cultivation of the porphyra monostrum and ulva you know so these are uh, intertidal seaweeds intertidal that there is a habitat where the seaweeds grow so it needs periodic exposure you know desiccation is needed for uh, as part of its natural life cycle right and that is why you have to mimic its natural habitat and finally for the d it is bottom planting in shallow water immersed all the times irrespective of the position of the tide high tide or low tide all the time it's always uh, you know always uh, submerged 
so this is good for benthic species you know so the water levels at high tides are shown above and low you know during all these illustrations i mean all in all these illustrations you can see that water levels two two kinds of water levels so in the type d which is always submerged in the water it's uh, you know the algae like gracilaria and cowder park can be cultivated you know so that is how we are uh, cultivating this algae the seaweed farming is a trendy topic these days you know there's a lot of demand on that so when i joined in this university way back in 2010 i was awarded with a very prestigious award by the dst yeah, insa inspire award so this enabled me to execute uh, you know i i covered almost all the cost line of this india as well as andaman and nicobar island and lakshadweep uh, it was supported by the dst insa inspire faculty award and now that i have another project from the dst it's called serb core research grant that enables me to do the same uh, biodiversity profiling and characterization of the seaweeds uh, uh, throughout the indian coastline so uh, during this time of course i could able to uh, my team could able to discover uh, you know new species discoveries in the indian coast one of the seaweeds that our team discovered is ulva paschima bast so as you can see it's an endemic uh, marine seaweed found only in the western coast of the indian subcontinent you know this is uh, one of the major discoveries that our team here in central university of punjab have made so another seaweed which we discovered is cladophora goensis bass this this is very interesting it's uh, found only in goen coast especially near the vasco da gama you know that is a type location of this algae so uh, this is basically a cladophora it's a green uh, you know green uh, algae macro algae so uh, another algae which our team has uh, discovered is called ulva uniciriata so it's a uniciriate filamentous algae you know uh, unbranched algae of course which we found it in uh, diamond harbor uh, in uh, west bengal you know diamond harbor as well as pulikot lake near srihari kota you know uh, uh, satish thawan space rocket launching center of the isro so it's very near to that area is uh, the, this particular pulikot lake is so we found this algae in both these locations diamond harbor as well as in pulikot lake so our team also found so many of these invasive algae including caulerpus calpeliformis the one which is pictured here is called caulerpus calpeliformis then caulerpa rismosa which is like the grapes you know the, it's a spherical uh, seaweed and also caulerpa taxifolia so caulder pataxifolia is not really invasive in india it's a, it's part of our indian coastal region but the same algae when it got introduced in a mediterranean it became invasive there you know uh, there is a very famous book uh, called killer algae so that is uh, all about the the uh, you know how this caulder pataxifolia completely changed the intertidal and subtidal habitats around the mediterranean coast you know especially in the french coastline you know that book is uh, quite famous yeah but uh, again that's kind of a, a, a misnomer killer algae it doesn't kill anything it only displaces the local flora you know the endemic flora that is the problem with the species invasion right by the way these are not really invasive in the indian uh, in the ocean right these are, these are basically the uh, the endemic algae right some of these are endemic algae in the in the ocean region Bogensia fopsei is another algae look at that it's like a gel like beautiful translucent algae uh, which is found in Andaman and Nicobar Island this is also a, a green macro algae Bryopsis plumosa you can see that Bryopsis is very very intricate very thin algae and Bryopsis has got very interesting uh, anti cancer molecules taxol you know it has been uh, got from the Bryopsis too you know and kalahalide f so bryopsis is extremely important uh, medically acetabularia acetabulum is a very interesting algae uh, which can easily be found around the coast of the andaman and nicobar island you know uh, it is like mermaid's umbrella you know very beautiful algae by the way this algae is a cenocytic the whole algae what you found, what you can see one uh, umbrella like umbrella like structure is just one cell you see it's very big cell isn't it uh yeah that is really interesting piece of information 
coming to life cycle you know life cycles are really important right so uh, this is the common uh, pattern of this uh, angiosperm life cycle you know the angiosperm life cycle is usually coming with the seed so seed develops into sporophyte that undergo the meiosis so the sporophyte stage is the haploid deployed right to an deployed stage so once the meiosis happens you know it, it, the deployed becomes haploid n right so two kinds of uh, uh, you know gametophytes develop from the uh, two types of spores uh, the one type is called megaspores so megaspores result in megasporophyte that leads to eggs while microspore so basically big spore and small spore right microspore develop into microgametophyte develops into sperm so this one megaspore lead to megagametophyte microspore uh, lead to microgametophyte so basically the term gametophytes means gamete producing right so gametophytes of course is sperm and eggs fertilization happens to form the seed so this stage onwards is the deployed while up to the sperm and egg gamete this is basically haploid right so that is what uh, this angiosperm generalized life cycle is uh, it's a sporophyte dominant so dominant means what you see with your naked eye is a sporophyte while gametophytes are really microscopic which is usually uh, found only inside if you dissect your flower you can see it so alternation of generation is present that means there are two kinds of uh, not de uh, diplohaplontic life cycle not two kinds of uh, uh, genome and the fertilization is internal so that happens not outside the body but inside the body just like human beings right and it's ogami ogami means uh, there is a marked difference between uh, the size of these two gametes sperm being much smaller than eggs eggs being much larger than the sperms so that is why it's called ogami coming to the life cycle of humans you can see it here meiosis happens to f uh, fertilize to form the zygote and the zygote eventually uh, the, the mitosis to develop the baby which is a 2n you see so here the only haplontic phase is the gametes right sperms and eggs so this baby develops back into uh, you know gamete producing like gametophyte right the adult human being is a gametophyte in, in one sense it's not phyte but it's a zoa gametozoans you can say so here there is is there any alternation of the life cycle no right and the, the fertilization is internal correct and is it a ogami yes because so uh, the female gametes are a large in size comparing with that of the male uh, sperm right yeah that is the the life cycle the introduction so if you speak about the life cycle there are several terms gametophyte means gamete producing multicellular plant usually it is haploid that is n uh, coming to sporophyte, spore producing multicellular plant. Both are multicellular, see gametophyte and sporophyte. And usually sporophytes are diploid. The term alternation of generation means multicellular, haploid, and diploid stages. So you need two stages, haploid and diploid. So that is why it's called diplohaplontic or haplodiplontic, you know, life cycle. Isogamy means fusion of the similar gametes. Male and female gametes are uh, the same size. That is called isogamy. Anisogamy, the term means fusion of dissimilar gametes. You know, if the gamete sizes are not similar, that is called anisogamy. And if the, the, the difference in size is really tremendous, then it's called oogamy. Very large female gametes, you know. Heteromorphic means dissimilar in morphology sporophyte morphology and gametophyte morphology if it's not similar it's called heteromorphic while isomorphic means morphology is similar you know dioecious means having the male and female reproductive organs in separate individuals separate sexes like in the case of human beings right dioecious the opposite is monoecious male and female reproductive organs in the same plant Monoecious means same sex, you know, so equivalent in the animal would be hermaphrodite, you know, same, both sex organs found in the same individuals. So that is called monoecious and dioecy, right? So first is monostroma. If you look at the life cycle of the monostroma, which is a green algae, 
the reproduction uh, the fertilization is anisogamy that means uh, male and female uh, gametes don't have the same size of course the, the female gametes are a little bit larger and that is why you are defining it as a female you see the one with the larger gamete is called female just for the sake of simplicity actually calling female or male makes no sense for plants right so the alternation is heteromorphic that means as you can see in this uh, life cycle so the gametophytes uh, releases a gamete then fertilization happens to form the zygote and this is a sporophyte see look at the sporophyte it's very microscopic right and then the reductive meiosis division happens to form the zoospores so sporophyte and gametophyte don't have similar uh, you know the appearance and that is why it is heteromorphic alternation gametophyte dominant life cycle like mosses so what you see is basically the gametophyte not really sporophyte which is unlike in the case of most of the flowering plants you know angiosperm what you see is usually it's sporophyte gametophytes are really microscopic you know usually this kind of gametophyte dominant life cycle you can see in moss you know so monostroma the green algae is something like moss life cycle in uh, in, 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 in 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 you know in uh, uh, in the case that this is a gametophyte dominant life cycle and fertilization is external so there is no internal fertilization you see it's an external fertilization external means that it, it releases the sperms and ovum and fertilized in in the ocean you know and then it deposits back so adaptation is also very interesting so these gametes are positively phototactic because of the eye spot so gametes have a small organism called eye spot that are attracted towards sunlight i have already explained that in one of my earlier lectures uh, the adaptive significance of this is that you know the ocean water is a three-dimensional space chance encounter of a male gametes with a female is very difficult in a three-dimensional space but because of the phototactic effect which is positively phototactic you know these gametes can swim towards the sun sunlight so towards the sunlight in ocean means towards the top so top of this the ocean is a layer right it's a surface layer so ocean surface is basically a two dimensional space where chance encounters uh, you know the chance is extremely high comparing with the three dimensional space of the uh, deep ocean you see so that is why uh, this positive phototacty is uh, uh, you know it is uh, it leads to uh, adaptation it's uh, you know it is basically an adaptive trait you know so it has got advantages in the survival and reproduction of this algae now because of this ice spot and for positive phototacty it can able to meet you know potential partners male with female female with male to form the zygote so once the zygote is formed so then suddenly it becomes negatively phototactic very exciting you see another piece of adaptation negative phototactic means it swims away from the sunlight from top the sunlight is coming from the top so instead of going up from up the zygote swims towards the ocean's depth so basically this is also an adaptation because the, the uh, zygotes cannot develop in the surface of the sea it needs a suitable substratum usually pebbles or rock you know so to in order to attach on to the pebbles or rock it needs to swim away from the light so that means away from the top towards the bottom so that is how the, the life cycle is right external fertilization is amplified by uh, positive and negative phototacty through uh, eye spot you know so of course monostroma also has got reported uh, monomorphic asexual life cycle it uh, it was discovered first time by me uh, you know during my the course of my own phd thesis coming to the next kind of algae it's ulva so ulva is isogamy it's not an isogamy isogamy as you can see here uh, male and female gametes of same size you know it's not that the females are larger than males you know so isogamy is kind of rare and uh, as you can see that after this formation of the gamete from these gametophytes uh, it uh, you know of course fertilized to form the zygote uh, zygote onwards is uh, 2n that is a diploid phase and it develops into sporophyte look at here 
Sporophyte is not microscopic, it's macroscopic and looks exactly identical to the gametophyte. So here it is basically, you know, isomorphic alternation of the generations, you know. And then it releases the zoospores which develops into respective male and female gametophytes. So see gametophytes have two types, male and female. So that is why it is dioecious, you know, separate sexes right dioecious so by the way the zygospores the zoospores of these uh, green macroalgae are usually quadriflagellate so quadri means the four flagella in it you know at the same time gametes are biflagellate if you go back in our earlier slide also in the case of monostroma 2 the zoospores are quadriflagellate you know four flagella at the same time for this one uh, you know this gametes are only uh, biflagellate and also another peculiarity of this zoospore is that zoospores have negative phototactic it need not go to the surface right what the zoospores need to do is find a suitable substratum so that is why it needs to swim away from the sunlight to go to the depth of the ocean so again that is an adaptation right very interesting right in the light of the evolution yeah the evolution lights up the entire uh, biology isn't it very interesting Next is Kaularpa. So Kaularpa is also very special among the green algae that it is monoecious. Monoecious means both the sex organs are in the same plant, you know, males and female. And uh, fertilization is anisogamy. Anisogamy means the female uh, gametes are a little bit larger in size, as you can see here. So gametophyte releases the gametes, which fertilizes to form the zygote. And zygotes develop straight into the gametophyte. There is no sporophyte stage at all. So that means that there is no alternation of the life cycle. You know, that's very interesting, right? And this life cycle is gametophyte dominant. So the dominant phase, what you can see, uh, you know, in the sea is uh, the gametophyte. Yeah, of course, there is no sporophyte too. And the fertilization is external. There is no internal uh, you know there is no of course there are no organs for internal fertilization to happen so it's an external fertilization and as you can see here uh, the fragmentation is also reported so this is how usually the color pie is being cultivated commercially you know the fragmentation in Philippines for example a lot of commercial cultivation of this seaweed so fragmentation is uh, fragmentation means you simply cut a piece of thalai and uh, uh, you know it can grow back into I mean it can increase its biomass by using the fragmentation so wherever the algae uh, has the fragmentation ability you need not rely upon its natural life cycle for commercial cultivation that's the point you know with a small fragment of this algae you can uh, grow back the algae uh, you, you know that can actually saves a lot of time for the commercial cultivation